Does meat rot in your colon? I'm Dr. Eric Westman and welcome to my channel where I review and debunk nutritional misinformation online. This is a video sent to me and thanks for your recommendations. It's from Ken Berry. Ken Berry is a family medicine doctor in Tennessee and I've spoken at Ken's conference. Uh, he has come up with something he calls the proper human diet, the PhD diet. I give him a hard time that he uh, is an MD, but he came up with the PhD diet. So I, I uh, get a lot of patients now who have come to me through Dr. Barry because they've started watching Dr. Barry's information. And, and I have to say, I, I've spent some time with Dr. Barry and his wife, Nisha, and I got to know them personally as well as professionally. I have never visited his practice, however, now there are other people taking over the majority of his practice. That's my understanding. But uh, what I like about it, always consider the source, is that Dr. Barry has his own weight loss journey and he also used the low carb keto lifestyle in his clinical practice. And so of all the people you can learn from, I think it's really good to learn from people who have used a low carb keto diet, if that's your goal, to learn about the diet and the nuance about it. Even visiting someone like Ken or myself can customize it and tailor it, you know, fine tune it even better. Uh, but I, I like Dr. Barry's uh, background and his, his use of the low carb keto intervention in medical illness. There are a lot of influencers who've never used it. In fact, there are a lot of people who don't know much about it who say it's bad. And I always, you know, if you want to learn about a keto diet, talk to a keto doctor, not a doctor who doesn't use it and just thinks it's bad. Likewise, don't talk to a keto diet for information about a different type of diet that they don't know much about. So let's see what Ken has to say about meat rotting in the colon. Does meat really rot in human colons? We're going to talk about that in this video. And actually at the end, I'm going to tell you what actually does rot in your colon. This myth was initially put out there on YouTube and other social media platforms by dishonest vegan influencers. And almost any reputable vegan influencer these days, they no longer tell this lie, but the echo of this lie still reverberates in the vegan community. In less educated vegans, many, many of them still believe this. On one of my Instagram posts the other day, I got tons of comments saying that meat rots in your colon. And I thought everyone knew that this wasn't true. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I think maybe we are lightning rods sometimes for people who still think it's not right or moral or, or it's insensitive to eat meat. I try to come at it from the health perspective rather than, than that perspective, even though that, that's valid. A few uh, months ago, I looked at a video from someone who had an ileostomy, meaning the the small intestine was brought out to the skin. And so he could see his intestinal contents as it came out. And he remarked, this young man remarked how he never sees meat come out the other end. It's always the cereal, the, the, the vegetable matter. It turns out we humans don't have the enzyme cellulase. Ace means enzyme. It doesn't have, we don't have the enzyme cellulase to degrade or break down cellulose. And cellulose is in the cell wall of, of plants. So of course he sees plants coming out the other end. And you, you know, I've seen plants come out the other, my other end, and it's very rare for me to see meat. So even in your experience, you'll see these other things undigested because we can't digest them. So if, uh, you know, one of the things here, even taking it back to, uh, there was this movie called The Road to Wellville, where it was sort of a spoof on the Seventh-day Adventist sanitarium at the time. Uh, and they had someone come up and look at the meat under a microscope and there were all these bacteria moving around and oh, therefore it's bad for you. Well, you'll hear the, the reality about how the human body deals with that. So I want to go through some anatomy and physiology in this short video. And if you watch it till the end, I'll actually tell you the things that do right in the human colon. 
when you put a piece of meat in your mouth, whether it's well done or whether it's completely raw, you're gonna chew it up. And whether you chew it well or whether you wolf it down, immediately when that piece of meat hits your stomach, your stomach pH is somewhere between 1.5 and 2.5. It's one of the most acidic stomach environments of any mammal or any animal on the planet. And that's another lie that you'll hear often in the vegan community is that our stomach pH is much more like a uh, herbivore, four, five, six, absolutely not true unless you're taking, you know, Nexium or Prilosec or something like that and, and canceling out all of your, the acid in your stomach. And the hydrochloric acid in your stomach acid plus the pepsin immediately start breaking down hunks of meat, whether very large or very small. And this immediately, before it ever leaves your stomach, the meat is broken up into very tiny pieces and becomes a, a thick, uh, muddy liquid called chyme. You know, the, a couple of thoughts here. If you've had a, a child, you raised a, a child, you see them put things in their mouth that, that are dirty, and, you know, sometimes uh, the, with bacteria and other terrible things, and it's the stomach acid that basically kills all that stuff. And he mentioned the, the reduction of stomach acid by medications. And yeah, it turns out there's a higher risk of having these infections like tuberculosis, which is a tough infection. Fortunately, we don't see it much anymore. If, you, if you're on a medicine that reduces the stomach acid, it can increase your risk for infections. So that always reassured me when I saw my children putting the darndest things in their mouth some people become germaphobes, not knowing that, or not realizing that actually the stomach's going to kill all that if you have a normal stomach. Another thought that occurred to me is that if you've had weight loss surgery, this st stomach, all this has been changed. And what's so amazing about the human body is that you can have your intestines rearranged so the, the this beautifully orchestrated digestion is all messed up. And you, it's all messed up and you can still gain weight. So most people will regain weight after weight loss surgery. So the idea of this being some sort of fragile system, no, no it's, it's so important to be able to absorb food. And here the meat is now being digested almost immediately in the acidic stomach environment. So when this chyme, which is the broken up meat, reaches the first part of your small intestine, the duodenum or duodenum, the enzymes are still acting on this meat. The uh, pepsin and the hydrochloric acid, the HCL gets neutralized in your small intestine, but then you also have other enzymes called trypsin and chymotrypsin, which continue to break the meat apart in the first part of your small intestine. So we're not to the colon yet, we're just still in the very first part of the small intestine. The trypsin, the chymotrypsin, and the pepsin are breaking down the meat into molecular sized structures. It's breaking all of the protein molecules apart into amino acid chains. And you may say, well, wait a minute, Dr. Barry, how do you know that there's not chunks of meat still at that point? Because you know, most people, we can't see inside of our intestines or inside our colon. So how do I know this for a fact? Well, I've been practicing family medicine for 21 years, and during that time, I've had many patients who have ostomy. A few have had ileostomies, which is they had colon cancer or they had some colon problem, and we needed to let the colon rest. So we would actually make an opening, an ostomy, in the third part of their small intestine, the ileum. So it's an ileostomy. And so their waste, instead of passing through the rectum and the anus, would actually come out of their ileum. And so if there are any hunks of meat left at that point, remember we're still in the small intestine, you would see it in the ostomy bag. Now there is a list of things that my patients have told me that they saw in their ostomy bag, but it was never meat. So then we're gonna pass through, the what's left of the meat's gonna pass through the ileocecal valve from the small intestine into the cecum, the first part of the large intestine. Now your, your large intestine is filled with billions if not trillions of bacteria, right? And when bacteria act on something, most vegans will say it ferments it, but you know another word for ferment? Right, yeah. And that's why if you leave something outside and, and bacteria are able to get it and get to it, 
it's going to start what stinking, right? That's the that's the fermenting or the rotting process as the bacteria and the fungi start to break down whatever food you left laying on the kitchen counter too long. And there are actually multiple sites on the colon where we can form an ostomy. So if we if the if the distal part of the colon we need to let it rest. We can we can put a, a ostomy in the cecum. We can put an ostomy in the ascending colon, the transverse colon, or the descending colon, or even the sigmoid colon. So what that's showing those those little red spots are are the 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 exit of the food will come out through the skin into that, and then there's usually a bag put on there. So it's called an ostomy be done in any of these places. And if you want to hear someone who has an ostomy bag, be sure to go to my prior video where I reviewed a video of a young man who had an ostomy and had the fecal contents come out into a bag. Very similar kind of story where you would see celery and vegetables but never meat. And so there's no rotting of the meat here. So that's the whole point, right? We can put ostomies in any of these places to let the remainder of the colon or large intestine rest. And so I've had patients with ostomies in all these positions of their large intestine and not a single patient has ever said, oh yeah, I saw a big hunk of ribeye or I saw a piece of bacon in my ostomy contents when I was changing my ostomy bag. But they did say, that they saw several other foods in their ostomy bag that did not digest in the upper part of the digestive system and were in fact rotting in their colon. Before I made this video, I wanted to be 100% sure. I wanted to talk to somebody who did, has dealt with thousands of ostomy bags and the contents therein. So I reached out to a friend of mine who's an ostomy nurse. And that, that's literally, she, all she does is take care of ostomies after the surgical procedure, she teaches the patients how to change their ostomy bag, how often to do it, how to, how to take care of the ostomy or the opening so that it doesn't get infected. And I ask her, how many times have you seen meat, any kind of meat, the, the bologna, hot dogs, cheap meat, expensive meat, bacon, in an ostomy bag from the ileum all the way down to the sigmoid colon? And she thought for a minute and she said, you know, I don't think I've ever saw a piece of meat come into an ostomy bag. What I do see, okay, are you ready? Are you ready to know what really rots in the human colon? She said, I have seen nuts, lots of nuts. I've seen corn, lots of corn. I've seen pieces of broccoli, pieces of cauliflower. I've seen lots of beans. I've seen oats even in ostomy bags, but I've never seen a piece of meat. So now we're left with objective evidence. This is eyewitness testimony from someone who's changed thousands of ostomy bags over her career. I, I like the way Dr. Barry teaches. This was a, a pretty much a physiology. This is how our stomachs and intestines work. And then also bringing in an expert in the clinic not just the pie in the sky, academic, what should be happening, it's what is happening. And I want you to use your own life experience to see if it rings true. Let me know down below. I, I remember in the, growing up in Wisconsin, there was a town, the Sun Prairie Corn Festival. I wonder if it still exists today. Let me know where you could put ears of corn as many ears of corn that you could put on a, a little a little paper uh, tray, and it was one dollar. I mean, this goes back to gosh, it must have been the 1970s, and and one dollar all the corn you could eat, and we'd be eating the corn with it with the butter and the salt, and you could just you could you know five to ten ears of corn. Well, it would all come out the next day, or a lot of it, because you couldn't chew it as much as it needed, and so anyway that. That's my experience that where corn certainly can come out the other end in my life experience. She's never once seen meat in the ostomy bag, but she's seen lots of different plants in the ostomy bag. The most common being corn and nuts. The most common nut being peanuts. And the reason this, this happens is that all of these plant foods are full of cellulose, which some people call fiber. And the human gut is not able to digest fiber ever. Cellulose, we can't break that down. And humans don't even have gut bacteria like ruminants do that can break the cellulose bonds between the individual sugar molecules. So fiber is waste. We have to poop that out. 
And so fiber is not digested in your stomach, small intestine or large intestine. And that's why some people call that evidence food because when you have a bowel movement, you see the evidence food in the toilet. That's what rots in your colon is oats, nuts, corn, broccoli, cauliflower, beans, and any fibrous plant remnants. That's what's rotting in your colon. So please share this video and help me just help all of the well-intentioned but misinformed vegans of the world that meat does not rot in your colon. Meat doesn't even hardly make it into your small intestine. It never makes it to the colon. This is one of many myths, that one of many echoes of a lie that continues to be perpetuated in the vegan community. It misleads vegans and it makes them think false things and it makes them say stupid things. And I really wanna help our vegan brothers and sisters understand that meat is one of the very first things that's digested in the human digestive system because it's so nutrient dense, your body wants that nutrition right now. What does rot in your colon is the plants. Well, I think that factually this is, was perfect. We just went through a anatomy and physiology lesson on how meat gets absorbed and how vegetable matter, because it cellulose needs cellulase to break it down, is not available. I suppose you could take, I don't even know if you, you can take lactase to, in order to have lactose. I've never heard of a cellulase that you would eat, but so the idea of not having those foods is kind of sensible. My still detraction or limitation about a policy about doing a carnivore diet is we need prospective studies. We need, we need uh, prospective studies that include everyone so you, you know what happens to those who are doing well and who aren't doing well. So I'm passively allowing more and more people to not eat so many vegetables. And some people come to me already reversing their diabetes on a carnivore diet. So it certainly is powerful. I, I see a carnivore or a PhD diet as a kind, a form of a low carb diet. People say not uh, everyone is in ketosis when they eat that way, which is fine. I mean, the, it makes no sense to have too many ketones and have them in the urine if you're using the ketones for energy. You don't want to waste it. So I think there'll be some efficiencies that we learn about it. But uh, in general, again, the theme is meat gets digested and uh, the acid in the stomach will, will, will kill the, the, the other organisms so that it protects us from, from other dangers. If you suppress the acid in the stomach, all of this can be messed up. But even in the context of weight loss surgery, where you might lop out two thirds of the stomach, that's called the gastric sleeve, or the ruin Y where the stomach is as big as a hen's egg, you can still absorb all, all of this and, and still gain weight. It, it just, again, attests to the amazing resiliency of the human GI tract system. Hope you find that helpful. If you do, please like, please subscribe, ring the notification bell. I'm dropping new videos every Wednesday and Friday. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and check out AdapterLifeAcademy.com.